I invite you to remain standing for this morning's gospel reading. This morning I read from the Gospel of Luke. For those of you playing at home, you'll notice quickly that it's not Luke 18, but Luke 17. Uh, I'll be reading the uh, uh, verses 11 through 19 of that chapter. Uh, hear now these words. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Simeon lay still, his eyes closed as he began to slowly wake up. He didn't want to move, as he could smell a little bit of the, uh, the, the campfire smoke blowing into his face. He, he knew what was happening. He knew it was time to get up and moving, but he just couldn't quite do it. He was having such an amazing dream. <laughs> in his dream, he was back home, uh, back in his beloved Samaria, back in the, the shadow of Mount Gerizim, where all of his people worshipped and practice their faith. There he was in his home, in his own bed at home where he had his eyes closed there and could smell the cooking fires as his wife made an amazing smelling breakfast for him. He could hear her uh, banging and making all the food as well as he heard his, uh, his three kids as they were banging around, running around through the house, uh, supposed to be doing their chores, but really more playing than anything, wrestling with each other as the day opened up. And as he lay in that bed, he started to, to hear somebody steal into the room quietly. He could tell by their movements that it was his wife who came in, which of course he knew was absolutely her when she planted a big kiss on his lips. And it was that moment that Simeon did not want to let go of, that he couldn't completely shake as his dream faded into daylight. He wanted to lay in the memory of that dream just a little while longer, but as he lay there, the sense of the campfire became mingled with the other smells around him of mildewed clothes, of human waste, and of rotting flesh. The smells of a leper colony. Immediately, Simeon re-remembered where he was, never completely comfortable with those smells or those first moments of the day. But as the dream shocked him into uh, some memories of his past, he, he continued before he got out of bed. He couldn't simply shake away the beauty of that memory. But the memories became progressively more painful. He remembered the, the look uh, of his arm. It didn't quite look right. And he understood eventually that there was a rash forming on it. He tried to hide it as long as he possibly could, but eventually realized that it was what he thought it was. And so he showed it to his wife, and he remembered her face. The look of horror and, and disgust. It was clear that 
She knew he had done something wrong to deserve this malady. She knew their love would never be the same again. He remembered the, the, the look and the words of the priest. He, he was uh, fairly popular, somewhat uh, well-respected there in his own community, was Simeon, and, and, and he knew the priest fairly well. And so when he began to, to fear for what was happening to him, he, he went to the priest hoping maybe he could uh, look the other way, maybe he could provide some words of support, but immediately he knew he was wrong, for the priest looked at him and declared him, pointing as he backed away, you are unclean. Unholy. He remembered the looks of confusion, the tears on the faces of his children as he said goodbye to them. He had to stand across the courtyard from them, not even daring to get close to them. The belief was that uh, that that disease was incredibly contagious and if the, the family caught it then they would be drugged into his pain as well and so he stood away as they cried as he cried and told them he would be back soon he remembered the last moments on the horizon of his beloved Mount Gerizim as he walked north. He had heard of a, a colony of lepers like him that was close to the border of Galilee and Samaria and so he walked to get there and every step of the way farther away from his beloved mountain that disappeared over the horizon, farther away from his family, farther away from his home, farther away from his life. Simeon remembered all of this pain as he finally sat up and looked at the camp around him. He was a, a sort of double outcast, was Simeon. He was outcast in a couple of different ways. Uh, one, because he was uh, a Samaritan, and so for all of the Jews that lived kind of in this region, uh, he was uh, looked down upon. He was a, a member of a, uh, an evil, uh, disgusting uh, race of people that, uh, uh, that, that was uh, incredibly painful, in addition to the, the outcast nature that his own people had sent him out because of his skin disease. Uh, so here he was, this outcast, in the midst of... Uh, uh, the, this camp of, of both Jews uh, as well as Samaritans together. You see, the, the, the difference between them uh, had been one that had uh, kind of grows up over the, the generations. Back in the, the, the early days, uh, they came from the same father. They came from the same uh, understanding of the faith. They, they uh, all believed in the Torah and thought that the Torah was incredibly important. But then uh, the, the, the division began between Samaritans and Jews um, uh, Samaritans uh, had a very different way of worshiping uh, on his beloved uh, Mount Gerizim while the, while the Jews worshiped down at uh, Jerusalem. That's the, the, some of the earliest memories that, uh, uh, that Simeon had was of the, the Jews that were traveling through his Samaria on the way down to worship. The looks that they gave him as they passed by were of pure contempt. They also believed different things about Scripture uh, the, the Samaritans believed that the Torah uh, was incredibly important. They called themselves the keepers of the Torah, uh, but that was it. And the uh, Jews began to, to believe in other important writings, such as uh, important histories, also uh, the, the prophetic oracles that they read. Uh, and of course, they had very different uh, political ideologies. The Samaritans uh, wanted to have nothing to do with David and his policies or any of his dynasty. Any of those kings were considered anathema to a good Samaritan like him. So these were the things that separated them out in the real world, but here at this camp, no, nobody cared where you were born. Nobody cared who your parents were. All were unholy. All were unclean. And that was the mantra that kept going through Simeon's mind as he finally got up and rolled up his clothes and got ready for the day. He stomped his feet there by the fire trying to stay warm as he looked about the camp around him. He imagined what a 
difficult thing it was to be unholy. You see, for him, it wasn't simply a matter of uh, the, 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 the brokenness, the ugliness, the, the disease of his skin. He believed that, that that disease had come on the inside as well, that he was completely diseased inside and out, that he was, that he was simply a, a broken piece of nothing. He was not worthy. He was not holy at all. He was not even worth love. And as he looked around at the camp, that is what he saw all around him. He saw the depraved. He saw the diseased. He saw the ugliness all around him and thought, none of these people can do or be anything right. Including myself. All were unclean. All were unholy. Those were the thoughts going through his mind as he, he gathered together. His job for that day was to, uh, to go out with some of the other lepers to try to beg for some food. Uh, there was at least a bit of community. Of course, they, they often fought with each other and there were power plays about who would be in charge. Uh, but they, they took care of one another and they, they went out to get food and bring it back for the, all those in the community. It may be a little bit of money if they were able to beg for some. Uh, and so that was Simeon's job. He was strong enough. He was able to do so. So he and nine companions uh, went out on the road in order to go look for somebody to beg for just a little help. Of course, they wore the, the mildewed clothes that they were required to wear so that anybody that came anywhere close to them would know just by the smell that this was not a group of people you wanted to get close to, lest their contagion affect you as well. As they walked, they began to fall into a conversation. One of them asked, well, have you heard the rumors? Have you heard about the, the healer who's traveling around in this area? He's not far from us. They, they call him Jesus. And they say that he heals all those that he meets, all those who are, are broken. And maybe, maybe, maybe we might see him. Maybe, what, if, what if he could heal us? What if he could take away our disease? What if, what if he could restore us and we could go home to our families and to our loved ones? What, what if? And Simeon snapped. And he stopped them and said, that's enough. They're just rumors. You are not going to be healed. You are not going to be saved. You're never going back to your families. You're going to live in that camp and you are going to die in that camp. There is no hope for you. You are depraved and you are useless. Get that in your skull. Needless to say, it shut down the conversation as they continued walking toward the town. Simeon wondered if perhaps he was too hard on them, but told himself they need to know the truth. Here and there, they began to see people on the road. They saw somebody uh, coming close, and of course they did what they, they were required by law to do. They backed away from the road, and they stood the, the required distance away, and they, they called out uh, asking for alms and, and screaming as loud as they could so that everybody would steer clear. Uh, unclean! Unholy. And a few people would leave a, a little bit of food, maybe a, a few coins on the road, and the, the ten would gather and scurry as soon as it was clear, and they would gather those things up. And so here and there, they would meet some people as they got closer to town. It got busier, and they got some more people. They, they even wondered if maybe they had had enough, they could go back now. Of course, they ate their full and thought, maybe we could take it back to those in the camp when they saw a crowd. A crowd that had uh, gathered close to one of the, the towns there that uh, uh, was a little bit strange in the, the energy that surrounded it. They wondered if there was maybe a stoning or something, uh, a fight, something going on, but, but it was a different kind of feel as those events. There was a, a hope to it. In fact, there were people that were running away from this crowd with this, this look of hope and this look of joy on their faces. One man ran all the way straight through the middle of them, scattering them as he screamed almost hysterically, I can see! I can see! Jesus has given me eyes to see. And all ten of them looked at each other and thought the same at once. It 
was the healer. The rumors are true. So they gathered together and ran toward the crowd. Of course, they couldn't get too close. They couldn't uh, be very close to what was going on. They couldn't get very close to the healer. They had just kind of called, but the, the chaos and the commotion and the din all around just made it almost impossible for anybody to hear anything because all, all the joy and the energy was just was too loud for them to, to even make a uh, move the needle on what was happening around them. Uh, but but here, here, here's where something amazing happened. See, uh, this became the most extraordinary event of Simeon's life. For the healer began to move out and away from the crowd just a little bit. He was on the move, going to a different place to continue his healing. That was the moment that these men knew they had a chance. You know, they were pretty good at getting people's attention. That's what they did, even at a distance. And so they called out together almost in one voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And the healer stopped in the middle of what he was doing. And he looked right at them. And he stood up and he walked into the midst of them. They backed up and they were nervous and they were scared. And what are we going to touch? Who are we going to be close to? We can't touch this man. They knew what would happen if they, they infected somebody especially as popular and important as this man. So they got away, but he came up into their midst, into their faces. He breathed on them and he looked at them and he touched them. Simeon couldn't remember the last time he had been touched by anybody that was not diseased. He touched their arms and their skin and their faces. And he looked into the eyes of Simeon. And he knew that these were the eyes of love. And he knew that that person, that holiness that stood in front of him was seen holy back. And before he understood it, he knew he was a holy child of God. <laughs> and the healer simply said, go and show yourselves to the priest. And then he turned and walked off. Now, this didn't take long for all ten of these men to know exactly what that meant. It meant the priests could go and they could examine them and they could then clear them and they could then say, yes, you are healed, go back to your homes. And so they didn't miss a beat. They were gone. They were running as fast as they could, trying to find the priest, trying to find somebody that could clear them to show them, yes, the evidence is here. Now can we please go back to our lives and as they ran Simeon looked down out of the corner of his eye where he used to see red splotches on the arm of a friend now he saw clear olive skin where he used to see white flakes covering a man's face now he saw flesh that was clean and clear and he thought, if they are being healed as we run, maybe I am too. And they all seem to stop at the same time and take off their mildewed clothes and unwrap their bandages and look and see that they were healed. And of course... The men didn't skip a beat. They were off again to say, now we can show them the truth, who we really are. But Simeon couldn't move. His feet were stuck in the ground, for he began a, a new transformation. Of course, what had happened to his skin was incredibly important and incredibly meaningful to him, but, but what was happening on the inside was more meaningful to him because not only was the disease falling off of his skin, but the disease in his soul was being healed. The disease that he believed he was worthless, that he was depraved, that he was nothing, was being washed away 
by the beauty he saw around him. As he saw those men running off to see the priests, he laughed as he remembered the beauty that they showed him. <laughs> One always uh, cocked his head when he was walking on the road like he was remembering a joke, smiling as he went. Another one was such a great builder of fires there at the camp and, and he was so impressed at the way that, that he could bank it and prepare for the, the overnight so that it would be there the next day. A third one was so meaningful in the way he cared for his mother, also sick and in the camp. He fed her and held her even though one of his arms was gone. He saw the beauty and the holiness of the men around him and of all of the things around him. He saw the way the light played in between the buildings, the shadow and the darkness and the light together. He saw the bushes on the side of the road and the colors that they had and how amazing and how incredibly exquisite they were. He saw even the dirt, the sand and the rock had a beautiful pattern that drew him to it to say, yes, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. And the inside of his heart was being changed. The, 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 the flakes fell off of his skin and off of his eyes. He could see the holy everywhere. And from those those, those uh, tree trunks, those feet that were stuck in the ground as the others ran off, he now had feet of wings. Not toward the priests, not the direction that they were going, but instead he ran back to Jesus. Back to the one who had healed him. He could not stop but thank the one who had done this for him. And so he ran up, getting as close as, as he could, as the crowd would let him. And then he pushed his way in. As he did, he, he, he cried out loud. He sang songs of praise. He thanked God. He praised all that was around him. But he praised, most of all, this one who sat in his midst. He was looking like a lunatic as he, he ran and fell at his feet. And he prostrated himself. And he just thanked Jesus for helping him see again. And he heard himself echoing the, uh, the words of the man who ran through them. My eyes, my eyes, I can see, I can see. You've given me eyes to see. Jesus started saying words to him, uh, asking where the other nine were. Well, who were the others that, that I healed? Oh, oh, the only one here is the Samaritan. Of course, he didn't hear any of it. He was singing the whole time. He was praising God the whole time. So thankful for the one that was in his midst. He said, he said it's not because of, of uh, my unworthiness. It's because he has made me worthy. It's not because of, of my being unclean. It's because he has made me unclean. It's not because of my unholiness. It's because now this one who is holy has shown me what is holy. And as he laid on the ground, Jesus told him one more word. Your faith has made you saved. Saved. Simeon thought he knew what that meant. He thought he had all that figured out once upon a time. He thought he knew how he was supposed to worship and what he was supposed to do and how he was supposed to practice his religious practices and what he was supposed to uh, live and how he was supposed to do that. But he knew in that moment that he had not had a clue what it meant to be saved before that moment. He had not had a clue what salvation was really about. And this man lay at the feet of Jesus. And he knew his life had forever been changed. No longer was he going to worship on his holy mountain of Gerizim. No longer would he follow the Jews and worship at the holy mountain of Jerusalem. He was going to worship at the feet of Jesus. The pinnacle of perfect holiness. And that is why he was saved. Let us pray.
God, you have loved the world. Your scripture tells us, the song reminds us, the story illumines for us what that love is about and how we too may be saved. Help us to see in your holiness that we indeed reflect as holy children of your love. Help us to remember to witness to your holiness as we witness to your creation. In your name we pray. Amen.